That's cool. Thank you. Oh. Product management might be the most difficult job in any organization. It's filled with ill-defined and often unexpected responsibilities that are foisted on your shoulders every day. So a lot of your success is correlated with your approach to relationships. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about the relationship between product management and design. First, a bit about me. Um, I've been helping to build design teams for the past 20 years for global ad agencies, consumer products, and enterprise SaaS businesses. Today, I'm VP of Design and Acting Head of Product Organization at Medium, where our mission is in part to enable the sharing of wisdom that can only be gained from lived experiences. On most weekends, I try to make it out to one of the 92 branches of the New York Public Library. Yes, it's still one of this nation's uh, most undervalued resources. Um, I don't know how far people have traveled today to get here, um, or if you're tuning in online, but I highly recommend visiting NYPL uh, online or off. So back to the relationship between product managers and designers. This is not a new topic. Um, there's troves of wisdom that you'll find on platforms like Medium. A um, bunch of fully formed thoughts, you know, conclusions, great advice from industry leaders and, you know, a lot of respectful voices um, that are talking about um, successes that they've had in the past. Um, and a lot of good wisdom, like I said, there. Um, and then there's me. I'm the type of person that prefaces all of my documents with works in progress. I feel like it just sets the expectation for the mess that you're going to find below. <laughs> so today, let's just assume that what we're going to be talking today about is thoughts in progress. Things that I'm thinking about as I think about successes and spectacular failures working with product managers. So here's my theory. Like all relationships, it always helps to understand yourself and understand your partner and what you're bringing to the relationship, right? But as it relates to design uh, and product management, I think it's most important to think about this along two vectors. So one is how you tend to show up in your role on the spectrum in introversion and extroversion. And the next vector is your experience with research. So let's dive into introversion and extroversion. So I think even Carl Jung, who introduced these terms to us uh, in the early 1900s, didn't think that people felt, felt squarely into one category or the other. Um, this is a spectrum, it's a continuum. It's how you end up showing up, your behaviors, patterns that you end up exhibiting in your particular role. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. And let's talk about this in a quadrant analysis, shall we? Um, over here on the y-axis, you'll see yourself as a PM um, and your, your, how you tend to show up in your particular role on the, on the spectrum of introversion and extroversion. And on the x-axis, how your design partner tends to show up in their particular role. So let's start with um, assuming you know, that uh, you and your design partner tend to behave more in introverted ways. Right? And this is interesting because I talked a lot about these ill-defined um, and, and unexpected responsibilities that fall on your shoulders, a lot of that is based on the premise that you come to work every day um, exhibiting extroverted behaviors, right? And that might not be the case. So I think if, if you and your design partner um, tend to be more extra introverted, um, one of the first things you should do is think about expanding that circle. This might start with uh, engaging with your engineering partners, um, but I'm thinking even beyond that. Start engaging some of your product marketing partners, um, people in success, um, people that might be in your sales organization, organization to help with some of those tasks that you know, fall squarely on the product manager for some reason. A lot of those things like leading group discussions um, or facilitating uh, workshops, that sort of thing. Um, so definitely expand that circle and spread out that responsibility. Um, and then don't be afraid and don't be ashamed of being a good note taker. I feel like half my colleagues think that's the only thing that I do. Um, if you tend to think in writing, if you tend to be more reflective um, about your thinking, there's no reason why you and your design partner can't make best-in-class internal documentation. And this is going to have outsized value for your organization. So don't be ashamed of it. Take notes. OK, so let's, let's move on to just assuming that maybe your design partner uh, shows up with a little bit more extroverted behaviors. Um, what might you be, do there? Um, so we talked about responsibilities. I think 
that naturally lends themselves to being somebody that you can pass the mic to. Um, it's nice to share the spotlight. I know the spotlight usually falls on product managers, but it's nice to share that spotlight occasionally and hear from voices um, outside of that particular role. So um, you have a built-in partner here that you can pass the mic to. Um, and then another responsibility that I didn't talk about uh, that product managers um, sometimes unfairly get, get saddled with is the idea of building teams, team building, right? Um, uh, having team bonding activities. And if this happens to be something that's in your design partner's wheelhouse, this could be a natural activity that they'd want to jump on and provide thoughts around. So uh, that's what I would definitely encourage you to do if that happens to be the particular situation that you find yourself in. But let's say the roles are reversed. Um, and you actually uh, show up to your role um, exhibiting more extroverted behaviors um, than your design partner. Um, there's a lot of responsibilities that end up falling on designers, too, that assume a lot about how they show up to their particular roles. Um, you know, speaking up in groups, uh, talking about things in certain settings that might not be entirely comfortable. So one recommendation would be to meet them where they're at. This might end up being you know, commenting or finding sticky notes in Figma or your design platform of choice. Um, finding you know, asynchronous platforms or your, your chat messaging systems um, like Slack uh, to kind of have asynchronous communications or, or find out where they're most engaged. Um, meet them where they're at. That will go a long way in kind of helping to build that muscle within uh, you know, your partnership um, to, to make sure that everybody's communicating more broadly. Um, and while you're doing that, you're going to start to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot about the questions that are most important to designers um, and some things that might not come up in those group meetings that you're, you're kind of expecting or you're wondering uh, if they're thinking that at all. So you're going to start learning these questions, questions like, uh, is, there research, is there more research that we could be doing to bolster our assumptions, to mitigate risk? Um, is what we're building, can it be componentized, added to a design system and used elsewhere in the product? Um, are we adding to UX debt? Is there something that we could do to address that? These are the types of questions that you could start to lead, but then over time, it could start to be distributed across the team um, and, something, and questions that people ask um, no matter what their function is. And that's a benefit to the, to the entire organization. All right, now let's move on to the case that you know, both you and your di designer, design partner show up to the organization um, exhibiting more extroverted behaviors. Um, what might you do there? So, you know, then all these responsibilities that I talked about, you have a built-in tag team partner. And this shows up in a lot of different ways, especially in company presentations. One way that this usually shows up is um, a, a product manager might set the business context for something or talk about a problem statement, and the designer might walk through um, a solution or demo a prototype. But these roles aren't locked in either, right? You can spread this out across roles, across each other's roles, um, so that Again, spreading that spotlight uh, benefits everyone in the organization. And then I would also recommend just getting out of the company, celebrating the success, talking about this outside of your organization. Not only is this great for your company, but this is great for your personal brand, too. So get out to ProductCon, talk about your relationship with your design partner and how uh, wonderful it's been for product development in general. Just get outside of the organization. So in general, when evaluating your relationship, Considering the spectrum of intro and extroversion, uh, introversion and extroversion can really help to build that trust between uh, product managers and designers, but also ultimately it could lead to a stronger and more functioning team. So let's talk a little bit about research. When I talk about research, I have a fairly broad definition of research. I'm not just including things that most people think about when they think about like UX research, right? I'm thinking about things you probably uh, take part in, you know, before you 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 met your design partner, you know, things like um, you know, understanding your competitive landscape, opportunity sizing, um, digging into your usage metrics, um, and then being roped into conversations with customers, as most product managers end up being roped into. Um, these are all research things as well. These are research activities. And um, I'm combining that with you know, your traditional UX research. So things like you know, study design, um, you know, ethnographic studies, um, usability testing, and facilitating co-creation workshops. These are all research activities. So when I talk about coming to your particular role with research experience, that's what I'm talking about. So again, let's start with assuming that 
you have very little research experience. Maybe this is your first role as a product manager, or you work at an organization that's super siloed, and you've never been expected to do a lot of research on your own. Um, and maybe this case might be the same for your, for your design partner. Um, so what might happen then? I'd say um, the first thing is that there's not a lot of learning that you're going to have to do. So why not start a book club? So all these books that you're reading by Teresa Torres or Steve Krug, why don't you exchange notes with your design partner? Share insights that you're learning as you're reading and understanding the role of research and what, what part it can play in product development. And as you're doing that, inevitably, you're going to find tools and services that you want to incorporate into your research practice. So the next thing I'd recommend is um, becoming joint points of contact for these tools and services in their sales or organization to really understand what the capabilities are in the tools, but then also the cost and the value that it could bring to the organization. Um, this will be the foundation of your research practice at the organization, so um, this is something that would be uh, exceptionally valuable for you and your design partner to engage in. Now, let's assume that your design partner comes to their role with a lot more experience. This tends to happen a lot. Um, and I'd say the first piece of advice is something that you should probably do no matter what the situation is, which is involve your design partner a lot earlier in the conversations that you're having in your own head or with others around product strategy. Assume that there is a research solution or to answer some of the questions that you're having as you're working things out. Have your design partner poke holes in your product strategy to make it stronger. Um, this is all stuff that I, I would recommend anyways, but especially if your design partner is coming into their role with a lot of research experience. And then secondly, as they engage in these research activities, talking with customers, developing research plans, add yourself as a plus one. You know, uh, there's no better way to kind of get practice and learn more about this and seeing it um, actually in application. So add yourself to, to these type of activities that your design partner is doing. But let's say the roles are reversed. You're actually coming to the role with a lot more research experience than your design partner. Um, what might happen then? So if you've done a lot of research, one of the things that you've probably realized is how difficult it is um, you know, to do participant recruitment. And as a product manager, you have access to a lot of things, not only in the organization, but outside of the organization. So I'd say that's something that you can start to lead, is participant recruitment for research activities. Um, and then also involve your design partner in this, but you can lead it to start and then exercise that muscle to really demonstrate how this can be wielded. How do you screen uh, potential research participants? Um, what kind of cohorts are you looking at when you think about your audience or your customer base? So that's something that uh, could definitely uh, strengthen this partnership. And then, again, all these research activities that you're already doing, whether it's opportunity sizing or understanding your competitive landscape, involve your design partner. Um, get them to build that exercise, exercise that muscle um, with research. Um, it's really going to help their practice, but then the partnership overall. Now, let's say you're in a fortunate situation where you and the design partner that you work with are coming to your roles with a lot of research experience. Uh, experience. This is an excellent position to be in. Um, and if this happens to be the case, I can think of no better advocates within the organization to think about expanding that research practice. Maybe there isn't even a dedicated researcher right now in your organization. There's no two better advocates for this particular role and expansion than you and your experience, research experience design partner. This also includes the procurement aspect of tools and services, as I mentioned before, um, really advocating for that additional spend or investment to the organization. And then also, with all the research experience that you both are doing, are adding to, to your particular roles, there's going to be a lot of outcomes that you have. Um, it's, it's, really start, it's really time to start thinking about a living repository of insights um, that can help not only your immediate team, but start to help uh, the wider organization as a whole. So when you think about your partnership uh, with designers, uh, it really helps to think about how much research experience you're bringing to the table. Because um, that's really you and your design partner are the foundation for a research practice, not only within your immediate team, but the entire organization. I had a mentor who told me they would never hire a product manager unless at some point during the interview process, they walked over to the whiteboard and started to make a list. So I'm going to leave you all with a list. Relationships. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's about listening. It's about understanding what your partner is coming to the table with. Um, but as it relates to product managers and designers, I think the two most important vectors are where 
each of you shows up on the spectrum of introversion and extroversion, and how much research experience you're bringing to your particular roles. Now, listening and understanding your partner,、uh, these aren't, you know, these aren't complicated ideas, but they are extremely hard to do. It's no wonder why most of our organizations are terrible at DEI initiatives. We draw such heavy lines around our particular functions or identities. So consider this activity or this exercise as your first step into building a more inclusive environment、uh, where you're working. And then, as I mentioned, these are all thoughts in progress. I look forward to continuing this conversation. I'm at Chinovi and on most platforms.、I'm、really excited to continue that discussion. And finally, a big shout out、uh, to my insanely talented colleague. Helena Zhang and her uh, partner uh, Tobias Fried, who invented phosphor icons, upon which this entire presentation relies.、Um, really big shout out to them.、Um, if you're going to be attending Figma's Config Conference next month, I highly recommend hearing Helena uh, speak. Uh, she's going to have a great segment there. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of Product Con.